we have that vaccine which has evidence of safety, immunogenicity, and efficacy. However, it is not yet licensed. And Merck was working heroically with the FDA. They filed a BLA. They were, uh, did a rolling BLA. They were trying to get their evidence in as quickly as possible, but, but there was a public health emergency. So expanded access offered a really ideal way to get this vaccine out to the people who needed it. And as of yesterday, it's gone to 275,000 people, again, giving it to the people that are at the highest risk of infection. Um, it offered a way to get it to those people, but also maintain the informed consent that is really appropriate for an investigational vaccine. So people that were in this, in this setting where they're obviously under duress on a daily basis, but also having been being told that they've just been in, in contact with this virus. Uh, they're able to understand the risks of this uh, proposed medical intervention. So turning to therapeutics, it's a slightly different story, but a, another interesting example of this complementarity between the two. So going back to the West Africa outbreak, we were able to launch a randomized control trial of ZMAP plus op optimized standard of care versus standard of care alone. And this allowed us to see some pretty good evidence. It didn't enroll enough to reach statistical significance, but a really good hint that this had a survival benefit for these patients. So fast forward to the outbreak in the DRC, and we were able to build on that evidence, as well as four other countermeasures that had evidence of efficacy in non-human primates and safety, at least in limited human trials. And the WHO launched their equivalent of expanded access. And so it's called the Monitored Emergency Use of Unregistered and Investigational Interventions, or MURI. So all of the Ebola treatment centers would uh, give out the, the medications, generate really important data on the safety of these medications, and uh, provide access to people in this setting. 